Alright, so we're picking up with this AudioPax 88 valve amplifier here and last time we looked at it we uh, concluded that this transformer was faulty and the uh, AudioPax have confirmed that um, had great support from AudioPax uh, Silvio there has really helped us out giving us all the kind of specs for that transformer um, and so I've got some requests out for quotations for a replacement for that but of course we have to take it out of the unit uh, and we'll undo the cable harness and like take it out of the unit and just check what we've got there make sure that we're ordering the right thing and here we are then uh, transformers uh, unbolted and then you can see I've had to undo the cable harness that was going all the way along there and then there's some underneath the deck here so it's quite invasive actually because undoing this harness is it's not just to do with this transformer it's to do with this guy as well um, so uh, anyway, we're free now, so we can we can lift this transformer out and uh, look at that on the bench in isolation and uh, see what we see what we think of that. So let's just move the main unit to the side and uh, we'll see what we have here. Um, so these were the two secondaries we looked at before, and one of them read OK, and the other one read essentially a short. And then uh, this was the primary side, and we also, as I understand it now, we've got plus and minus 10 volts on this grey and yellow pair. And then the green, I suspect, is just a shield that goes to the chassis. So this is a few weeks later then, and we've got our uh, replacement transformer here. Uh, and these are custom transformers. This is the, the reason for the... A sort of delay and complexity here. So this is custom made, came from uh, Brazil. Uh, um, and so just a, we'll do a quick check. Um, what we found before was uh, clearly some of the windings were shorted when we came to our final conclusions. And if I, this this is the original transformer here, if I check between the green and yellow, there we're reading half an ohm uh, and that's where we concluded there was some uh, winding short here if I do the same thing on the replacement uh, we see hundreds and odd ohms, 115 ohms uh, and that's what it should be so quite happy with that um, what I'm going to do though, uh, just before we sort of wire it into the unit is I'll, I'll connect mains to the thing and then we'll just measure the voltages just as a reference before we put this thing together. Uh, we're all powered up then and the uh, transformer is buzzing away quite happily there so that's encouraging. Um, so let's just go through here one at a time. I know the green one here is my common and uh, so we've got 330, 330 and then this is 125 and I should see the same on the other pair here I'm watching what I do with my fingers given these higher higher than normal voltages that I, I tend to deal with. Um, 330 again. It's 330. And then uh, this should be 125. There we go, 125. And if I look at my uh, 10 volts, then I should have a centre tap on the grey, so I'm leading, reading 11 volts on one side and 11 volts on the other side so that's all as we expect then, quite happy with that and uh, now I can then go and start to install this into the unit and at least we've got a record of these voltages before we do anything and this is obviously offload, there's no load here so the voltage might dip a bit once we've got our all are set up and valves in place, but we're in a healthy place now, so we can go and install this uh, transformer. Uh, the other thing that I have, if I find it good here, uh, got some uh, replacement uh, relays for the relay board. Um, we spoke about how the contacts must have been welded um, when this problem arose originally, so we need to replace these. And uh, there was some advice from Audio Packs that. Uh, uh, you know, they've kind of changed supplier for these relays, so we've got the sort of proper one there, so we'll install those as well. Here's our transformer all installed then, and uh, all wired up. 
and uh, you can see we've redone this cable harness so it's all heat shrinked as it was before uh, all good there and then we've also changed this relay uh, as we mentioned before and then our, our secondary wiring is these uh, two pairs here so they're uh, now uh, wired up to the board and the uh, same on the other side you know these are symmetrical pairs so both sides have done that and then the uh, 10 volt winding goes down uh, the wiring of that is on the other side of the board but that's all in place as well so uh, <clears throat> that's everything connected up now the next thing uh, really is to power it up and do our basic uh, turn on tests so we've uh, powered the unit up now and it seems all ok both transformers are up and running after the uh, turn on delay um, but before we put any valves in we've got some measurements to make um, just to, on, the, on the various valve pins just to check everything's sensible the first one's heater voltage um, and that's in these two pins here and we should be about 6.7 volts so that's not bad, about 6.5 volts there and, uh, and they're both in parallel so this should just read the same that's fine OK so the next voltage to check is the DC on the valve and uh, this is on this pin here and here we're reading just under 420 so about 416 now I've got a the documentation I've got says it should be around 410 um, but this will vary a bit with the mains voltage uh, and there's probably quite a tolerance on this anyway so I'm quite okay with that uh, and it's consistent with the other unit as well you know this is obviously a mono amplifier and I've, I've checked the other units so this is uh, fairly consistent there and if we check the other one here it uh, should be a wee bit higher there we're just about 420 six at this point so that's all good uh, and then we've got this uh, variable bias uh, timber lock uh, adjustment that we talk about here and so that should vary between uh, minus say uh, 22 and minus 47 so there's at uh, one end we're reading minus 50 so that's all right and if we adjust we're up about 24 so that's all right and we just check the same thing on the other valve so again minus 50 when we're fully anti-clockwise and uh, up to 23 24 volts so that's all right quite happy with that again consistent with the other amplifier and pretty close to the documentation um, so that all looks in good shape now and I think the next thing you know we'll we'll put the valves in and uh, uh, see what happens when we do that see how it looks then here's the moment of truth then both sets of valves are installed so if we power up we should see the the heaters starting to light the valves up It'll take a few seconds for that to show up there we go, you can see quite a a nice uh, red glow in all uh, all four valves there, so that's quite uh, comforting I guess. So before I go and make some deeper audio measurements, I, I ran the amplifier for a while and I was conscious that things were actually getting very hot, you know the transformer that we just replaced runs very hot. And I did go and check the currents on the secondary and they all seem within the sort of bounds I've been given. So I've no reason to believe that this is anything other than normal. Um, but we can see here we're sitting near 65 degrees uh, on the surface of this transformer. So the core is going to be significantly warmer. Um, and uh, you know this is, this is actually running very, very hot. And I've no doubt that this has been a contributor to the failure of the previous part uh, you know running at this kind of temperatures for a significant period of time the the insulation's simply going to break down and uh, result in the failures we had and of course the other thing is that uh, this is with the covers off once we put the covers on this is going to get even hotter still so uh, this is where we are i think we're just pushing this transformer very very hard indeed 
This is just a wider uh, picture showing the S2 here is the heater transformer. So we can see it's a good uh, 10 degrees, uh, actually nearer 14 degrees uh, uh, lower in temperature there. So this last plot is a, it's another spare transformer uh, that's just running on the bench here. Um, and there's nothing connected to it, there's no load. Um, so uh, what we can see here is there's nearly a 15 degree rise on this with no load connected. Um, so this is this is just the power being dissipated to magnetize the core of this transformer. So again, it's running very, very hot. And uh, obviously when we, you know, when we have it connected to the amplifier and uh, that extra load on it, we've got all the extra winding losses and uh, the like that contribute to higher power and higher temperature. Um, so anyway, we'll continue. We'll go on now and we'll make some more, uh, we'll make some detailed uh, measurements of the distortion and the like. Here we are connected to the audio analyzer then and the, the output of the amplifier is connected to an 8 ohm load and uh, so we're looking at the output here with no input and we can see there's quite a quite a lot of mains noise going on here. We've got our 50 hertz and then rectified mains and harmonics of that going quite a way up the spectrum. Um, so we're going to hear that, we're going to hear a little bit of hum. Um, I'm assuming this is normal, I don't have any references to go by here but we're just uh, taking a look at what we've got. Uh, so I, I've kind of been playing with some levels here and if I, I put the signal on, here we are, and what we what we do see is we're not um, we're not seeing sidebands of this mains garbage on the signal so that's a good thing. Um, I've set the output level to one watt here and if we look at the distortion it's about 0.6 0.7 percent there, and I, that number should be should vary with the timber lock, I believe. Um, let's now go and we'll set up for uh, a 10 watts in the output, and then we'll maybe play with the timber lock, and we'll see what effect that has on the on the distortion. So let's first of all. Yeah, so there's about 9 watts. Let me just n nudge it up a little bit more. Okay, 10, 11 watts there. And, oh, distortion's gone quite high there. We're up about 3%. So we can probably do a bit better than that if we adjust, make our adjustments. Um, so this is me just adjusting the timber lock there. Ah, right, now we're getting quite a significant improvement. So I can really bring that down. It's probably about optimum there. Um, now what has that done for our level? So I've, I, I've actually got increased power, interesting. Increased power and my distortion's down about quarter percent at that uh, 13 watts there. Um, so pretty interesting. Um, pretty reasonable distortion numbers really for a valve amplifier, transformer output. Um, so yeah. Um, as I say, don't have any references for this. This was just curiosity, see how the thing looked. Um, but there we go. I think I'll go and take a frequency response measurement now. We'll see what that looks like. Here's a measurement of the frequency response then. And we're supposed to have a gain of 18. And we're pretty close to that. Uh, you can see at 1 kilohertz there, just a little bit over. Um, however, we're supposed to have a bandwidth of up to 100 kilohertz. And they, I'm measuring just under 70 here. So our bandwidth's a little bit low. But there we are, that's our frequency response measurement. So I think we've uh, done as much as we can do here now. I think the uh, last thing we'll do is uh, put it together and we'll have a wee listen, see how the thing sounds. Here we are then, the covers are back on. And this, this is the amplifier that we've repaired and we've got as partner here. And I'm just using my passive preamp to uh, act as a volume control there. Uh, so I've been listening to these, they're very nice actually. Um, so let's just wrap up here, we'll just uh, play some music. <laughs> 